simply a string of names I have. I have a timeout, so it pretends like it takes time to read from the database and does some fancy stuff. Um, but you just see when it started up, it was waiting for an object. I had already subscribed to it. It knew it was coming. Didn't do anything until I actually got the data. Then I reacted to it, stuck it into its property, and then let it to change to text and handle it on the screen to display the names. And then since it was an API call, it was a whole journal, and it actually got a complete call down here in the console log. So, so far, there's really why, why these, why not promises. They're really so far look exactly the same as just a then command on promise. So what can promises do that observables can't? Nothing. There's literally nothing that a promise can do that an observable can't. But the other side, uh, observables are lazy. They actually don't do anything until something is actually observing the stream, if it's a cold observable. Um, they're cancelable. You can actually shut them off, kill them, and especially if there's some kind of timeout or something, you can actually shut all that down so all the processing will stop in its teardown function. Um, observables can be retried and re-ran. And a promise, whenever you set up a promise and you have your then, it's going to run, it's going to run once, and that's it. And then the data is there, you can't really trigger it again unless you rebuild another promise. Uh, with observables, it doesn't really work that way. Anytime you subscribe to it, it's going to refire everything and redo everything, which is kind of the tricky part with actually designing with observables. Um, several operators can be leveraged in React for observables. So there's you know, the map function, and there's a whole bunch of different functions we'll get into later. Not too far in, um, but I do have a demo of this guy. So promises versus observables. Whenever I go ahead and make a start command, it's going to create and set up a observable for me, and it's going to set up a promise uh, in the console log. <coughs> So, so there I've started the promise. The promise has already hit its timeout that's inside of the promise. So if this was an API call, the promise would be done already. It's already made its call, got its data, and it's just sitting waiting for you to do something with it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and consume the promise, and it you know, spits out our return value. Now, the observable is actually ready to go. It's sitting there. It's not quite been subscribed to, but I have it. So by consuming the observable, you'll see that it actually starts it, hits its timeout, and then returns the value. So no matter how many times, it'll always go through the same steps. I can call it over and over again, where if I was to consume the promise over again, it, it doesn't actually rebuild itself or hit the API again. Let's take a look at what's going on. Um, there's the timeout that I was talking about that's in there, and then it just resolves 99 after one second in the actual promise. Uh, and then in the observable test, we've got a little bit more going on. Uh, we're actually setting the timeout, but we're keeping a hold of it. Uh, it's got its start to let you know that it started the timeout's running, and then you hit, and it next, this observer next, that actually puts something in the stream to send it out. In this kind of observable, we're actually creating the observer and the observable, so we can react on both sides of it. So we can actually send the data through the observable to whoever's consuming or subscribing to it. And then down at the bottom, the return clear timeout. Whenever something is unsubscribed from this observable, it's going to kill what's running inside of it. So it can actually have its setup and its teardown all in one function, and you can kill whatever's running. That subscribe button, uh, there it is. The consume the observable, all I did was subscribe to it and spit the data out on the screen. Um, but then we can actually go ahead and run a demo of it tearing itself down. So what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and subscribe to it, it's going to start its one second timer and then a half second in it's going to go ahead and unsubscribe which will go ahead and cancel everything inside of the observable. So if this was an API call, it would just cancel the request, cancel everything.
We'll go ahead and set everything up again. Promise run. We'll consume the observable. It started. Nothing happened because a half second in, it went ahead and unsubscribed and it ran through its teardown and killed the timeout inside of it and stopped the timer. So based on that, every time we subscribe to an observable that makes an API call, it's going to go hit my endpoint, each subscription. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a very bad thing. That sounds stupid, but it, you don't have to be that way. Uh, RxJS has several types of subjects for this reason. Um, subjects are, depending on the kind of subject, a hot or cold observable style. Uh, they're kind of a bridge or proxy that acts as both the observer and the observable without you actually having, having to set it up like we did. Uh, they pass admitted items and current admitted items to the subscriber. So some actual subjects will replay everything that they've had passed through them before the subscribe. Some only reiterate what happens after depending on what kind of subject you use. Um, subjects can also subscribe to a cold observable starting its emission of items and turning it into a hot observable for you so that you can consume them and share them. So in here, we have a ng on init that's going to fire as soon as everything is initialized and ready to run. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do a basic subscribe. Uh, name service.names is actually a get request. We'll take a look at that here in a second. Um, but what this is going to do is when it fires up, give me all the names. And then if I press the reload items, it's going to go ahead and fire out and rerun the subscribe again. We go down and look at the name service. Uh, there's the get for names. It's just going to go ahead and return an observable to me. Right now, it's set up just to run the API call over again. Um, whenever you do that, whenever we run it, it's just going to trigger the API call over and over again like we did seen. So there's its first one. And then every time we click the button, it's going to go out and hit the server again, and that's really not optimal. Um, it you know, takes a while, we don't want, especially in this kind of environment for a single page application where we don't really need fresh data again. We just want the data that we had already retrieved, especially if we're in a subcomponent. So there's a few things we can do. Um, I have already set up a name cache. So So what we're using here is a publish behavior. Uh, this will actually turn our request into a behavior subject. Um, this will this will actually generate a behavior subject for us, and the ref count at the end will actually keep that observable live. That will specify that it's a hot observable and it won't finish when it finishes. That way we can subscribe to it over and over again, and it's going to emit the same data that we've already got. Um, we'll cover the subjects a little more thoroughly in a little bit, uh, but this is probably the simplest way to actually cache an API call so that we don't have to run it over and over again. Let it build and we'll see what the server does now. So there's our first call. Our first one took a little while.
Okay, so this is something I learned while doing this. A publish behavior is not the same as a publish replay. Uh, publish behavior will let you finish it, even though you've told it its ref count, it will not stay alive. So it ran the first time, and then the second time I ran it, it just told me it was completed, told me to go away. So if I use a publish replay, it's a replay subject, uh, but if I tell it one, if you were first property, let's see what it's called. Uh, buffer size. So if I tell it a replay, publish replay, create a replay subject of one, that's going to give me a buffer size of one. So whenever I subscribe to it, it's going to repeat the last thing that was out. If I was to tell it two, it would repeat the last two emissions it got, or three or four, and you could actually grow that buffer size, and then it will give you that many, the X of last emissions that it got through it. This should be half now. Women's names, and then it pulled it from cash nice and fast, didn't have to go back out and get the data. All right, so we covered a little bit about the subjects. I said it a few times. There's several different subjects that you can use. Um, async subject, I haven't really necessarily quite used this exact kind of subject yet in my usage. Uh, but it emits the last value and only last value emitted by the source observable only after that source completes. So in an API call, this would actually probably be pretty decent as long as you didn't really want to react with it over and over again. It will actually wait until its completion to answer anybody with anything. So if it was still alive, you wouldn't get anything until you were sure the entire stream was done, the subject got it complete. Um, this would be, you know, subscriber one got it in the beginning but didn't get anything until after everything was completed and then it let, let the two subscribers know what the last thing it got was. Uh, if the source observable terminates with an error, the async subject will not admit any items, but will simply pass the error directly through to everybody. There's different subjects do different things. Uh, if anything happens at all inside of the stream, it'll just admit that it got an error instead of giving you any kind of data that it had received already. Uh, behavior subject, that's the one we use the most. Personally, I use the most. You can initialize it with a C value. That way, whenever you go to load the page, you already have something. You don't have to wait and play with you know, it possibly being null while it's trying to load. You can pass it in an empty array, or you can actually pass it in an initialized C value. Um, but whenever something <coughs> subscribes to it, it will get the very last thing that was emitted and in every emission after that. So in the case of this top subscriber, uh, it got its C because it hadn't had any real emissions from the base observable. And then it just replayed and transmitted every single one that it got throughout its stream. And then the bottom guy down here actually subscribed halfway through. He got the last emission that came through and then all the subsequent and the completion. So same thing goes uh, for these guys, and it will reiterate the failure. Uh, however, it will give everything that comes through the stream because it's real time as it's getting data, and it will also pass its C. But if you subscribe after the error, it will not give you any kind of data, it will just give you the error. Publish subject. Um, this admits to the subscriber only those committed by the source after the subscriber subscription. There is no C to this. It doesn't need to tell you the last thing that happened. And then, just like the second subscriber here, once you subscribe to it, you're only going to get future values. You won't get the past values or any of those. And again, just like the rest of them, this one, if it gets an error, it will only give you, since you're only in the future, if you subscribe right before an error, you're only going to get the error. But if it gets emissions, it'll go ahead and broadcast those to you. As it runs through the stream, up, as it runs through the stream up until it gets the error. Uh, replay subject. That's kind of what we used before. It will catch you up with everything and do its completion. I've come to find that like the publish replay and the publish behavior, they have special rules that don't apply to their general subjects. 
I personally tend to actually set up my own subjects and control my own subjects instead of allowing RxJS to set up their published subjects like we did. I actually like to go ahead and set up a replay subject. Uh, it allows you to do a little bit more control. You can actually emit your own, uh, emit your own values through this. So you can get your initial data through an API call, and then you can actually emit changes on other components back through the same, same observable to the shift components <coughs> on down the branch. Um, that's a replay subject. It's pretty much just, it'll give you everything through the whole thing, uh, the bottom subscriber here. He'll get every emission that's ever came through it, the whole entire history. You can also set on the replay subject uh, buffer size, so you can actually limit so that it only gets like the last two or three in case it's a really long observable. <coughs> so inside of this, one of the key things that this is used for a lot is data sharing. Um, there's two components on the screen. Um, this. For the purpose of this exact demo, this isn't the way I would do this. I actually have another example that will show you how the right way to actually do this. Um, but these are two different components that retrieve their own data. They both subscribe to uh, the service that I showed you earlier. Uh, but what's weird is you can update one, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, it triggers the update, but component number two has no idea what's going on. And say we want to reflect that data in two, but we only want to reflect it when it saves, we would have to have some kind of saving or pass something down or pass something through. We can actually handle this with observables. Let's go back into this guy. 